Hey, gorgeous seekers, and welcome to this elusive coffee and chat that I have been wanting to make for the last three months. And here we are. Uh, I followed an impulse last night. I put up a little Instagram story asking you what questions have been coming up in life. Like, what have been some of the big wonderings that have come up recently for you all so that we can just sit and have like a really authentic and cozy chat. And I think it's cozy to talk about the deep stuff in life. So for me, in my head, this is as cozy as it gets. This is the best feeling place to be talking about these topics, getting deep in them, asking the big questions and really enjoying it especially if I have some coffee in one of my favorite mugs. So let me have a sip of that and let's get started. So a few of you asked how I'm doing. I'm just curious about where I am in my life journey and I'm doing really, really great. I've been in these last three months since our last coffee and chat, you know, one of the big themes that's been coming up for me in my work and just who I am as I'm developing into the practitioner and the leader and just the creative, like somebody who loves to paint and draw and think and write and create, um, both behind the scenes in my own really personal world. And then also here in this community, I've been really thinking about what that feels and looks like to me and how I've grown and how I've changed and really coming to greater integrity with myself as far as how I want to show up here and being really honest about what that means for me. So that's been a really big um, transformation for me internally over the last few months because I want to be doing this from a place of joy and love and my relationship to things like tarot and astrology have evolved over the years as I've worked with those tools because the more that you delve into practices of coming home to self, coming home to soul, coming home to that greater, um, some call it a vacuum, some call it God, some call it um, the universe, right? We have so many different names for it. The more that you realize, you know, these symbolic tools are really great. You know, they, they can help us access different aspects of ourselves, process shadow sides, um, activate and explore parts of ourselves that are empowered. But they are also not, I'm not big on like fate or like, because this transit's happening, these are the only things you're allowed to do. I am more and more intrigued as I go on this journey with the deeper questions about, are we coming home to our soul self? Are we coming home to our soul song? And you'll be finding that I'm trying to incorporate that more and more into my teachings. I think I already do that, but for me, I feel much more playful and joyful when I'm asking those questions. So that's been a really big thing. Um, and as we talked about in the last coffee and chat, my life's been kind of, uh, I haven't had like a stable home base because I've been, I'm working on moving countries and a big immigration process and, and I, you know, just a lot of adventures and they're really positive things that are happening. And I've learned a lot in the last year. I've been living basically with a very small wardrobe. I don't have a lot of like, um, physical things. I don't have a big wardrobe. I don't have a lot of the things that are sometimes I think considered kind of fun. You know, I have not been the biggest consumer in the world. Um, and I know a lot of you relate to that. And I've also had to learn to just work and create with what I have, not put it off for a year or a month when I have my dream studio set up and when I have my stability underneath me. Um, and I, that's still going to be that whole concept of stability and staying home and being with my partner and just having consistency is something that's not going to be probably fully in my life until 2022. I'm still in the midst of my immigration process. So that is ongoing. And, you know, I'm finding my comfort in that. I think I can see the end in sight and I'm enjoying this transitional period where I'm kind of getting to explore how I'm letting go of who I've been and welcoming in who who I get to explore becoming in the coming months. So I think you'll be seeing that as well throughout the journey of this year. But I'm feeling really happy because I have some big things ahead and I'll be really excited to share more with you about what it's like to move to another country, what it's like to explore yourself through another language, another culture, um, sticking out socially like a sore thumb. <laughs> Um, I don't know if that's really true, but you know, the whole journey of moving to Sweden 
Um, I will be sharing much more about that in coming months and years. Um, I'm really excited to do that with you as we can explore that more, especially once we move into a time when it's going to be so much easier to meet people and be out doing stuff and exploring things. And so it's going to be really fun to have a bit of a diary with you all about my journey doing that and really making a permanent move and leaving behind a huge chapter of my life and really stably developing a new one. So that's all ongoing. And there are days when that feels really easy and days where it feels really overwhelming, but I am contented because I'm list I've been following my soul song, my soul gut instinct this whole time, you know, for a few years now, it's led me to this point. And so anytime I'm feeling overwhelmed, I just go back to that place. And that actually brings me to what I want to talk about today in the context of this Q&A, it really turned into the more I looked at the questions, the more I looked at what people were asking about, the more there was some really strong themes that came through. And of course, if I don't get to your question today, feel, feel free to leave it below as well. Um, we're going to do more of these. So but I, I there was a there was a clear theme coming into this next season of life coming through after a year, as we all know, of this pandemic of being told a lot of scary stories, feeling a lot of stress, feeling a lot of grief, a lot of strain, um, a lot of limitation. Like how to get back into a good place with manifestation, how to know what the next right step is, how to trust myself, how to, uh, how to start a creative journey when I'm just feeling dead inside like these, there was like, it's like a theme on a similar question, which is like, how do you feel that sense of integrity with yourself where it's like, you know what the next right step is and you know how to begin that creative journey and you feel like you're in flow with life, even when there are ups and downs and uncertainties and unclear and things that are unclear and things that are hard to plan for. Um, we can't make plans for six months from now and that can feel really debilitating and frustrating. And so there was these huge, there's like a, there was a really strong theme that I think a lot of us are feeling about like how to come back to a place where we feel that sense of creative flow, excitement, um, like we're taking the next right steps, like we're not just stuck or like we're reliving the same loop over and over again and going back to our same old trauma responses. And so there was a really strong theme and, you know, I actually realized, and, you know, obviously this is just one part of this whole conversation. I won't be able to cover every eventuality in this, in this particular coffee and chat, but I, I realized there is a really simple and clear message conversation that I find really helpful for me. And I think others will find it helpful as well, which is small steps are not actually small. And if we want to hear our soul voice, we want to hear our creative voice, we want to trust ourselves more, we want to feel like we can start to move forward in life, start to feel like we are in dynamic conversation with life, like we can actually create the thing we want to create, change the job we want to change, move, uh, change our relationships, become the person we're dreaming of becoming, you know, the things that are locked inside of us that we want to figure out how to take a step on, how to trust ourselves. We have to start in the tiny steps because our soul song, our soul voice, and that's what I tend to call it, speaks in nudges and whispers generally until we push ourselves so hard that the alarm bells go off. And then the soul voice is like, Hey, I'm going to shut your body down because you're going in a direction that feels bad. And I can't let you keep going that direction. So I'm going to try my best to get you to stop, to bring you back. Right. But normally speaking, our soul voice is going to speak to us in, in quiet nudges and whispers. And we've been told on like a macro cultural level, that those small steps, those small showing ups that we do in our lives, taking 15 minutes to journal, taking 15 minutes to practice painting or drawing, taking 15 minutes to update our resume or to explore, you know, a different career path, whatever, 
doesn't mean anything. It only means something if we do it for eight hours a day. If we push ourselves to the brink to where we we get so worked up and manic that by the end of the day, we have depleted all of our adrenaline and cortisol in our body, right? There is a message that says there is no value in small steps. There is no value in small showing up. And it's, it's internalized for a lot of us. I know for me, I've found that often, you know, um, when I can't, when I, my energy has been really low, there have been definite times this last year where my energy has been so low and I have felt really overwhelmed and like, how do I even keep going? How do I even keep creating? And part of that has been feeling like I'm not allowed to just show up for that, that 30 minutes because it's not valuable. It's not worth anything. You're not really going to do anything if you just show up for 15 minutes. Are you kidding me? And that voice is the inner critic. It is the inner cynic. It is the the voice that wants us to just conform to the non-creative path, to the non-soulful path. And it's it's in error. It's, It's incorrect, that voice that says that. And so if you are somebody who is creative and you're feeling blocked, wants to trust yourself so that you can take steps to the life you want to be living, wants to feel like you can make plans in life that feel good to you. Give the power back to those small nudges and whispers. And a lot of times, honestly, um, and I'm not even, you know, the first one to say this by a mile, by a million miles, you know, but give your power back to those small steps because sometimes it's just go for a walk or make a cup of tea. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. But think about that. Think about how much, how quickly you might come to the conclusion where that voice will come up that says, making a cup of tea, please. That isn't a soul nudge. That has no value. That has no concrete value currency in this world. And I'm just going to be here to advocate for you and say that, yes, it is. If that cup of tea sounds really good to you, like this coffee, It's amazing. I love it. I feel so happy sitting here with this coffee. And you're going to tell me that's not worth something. To feel deep contentment with a small thing like that. You're not going to tell me that that's going to start an energetic ripple in your day immediately. That takes you to better places. And tied hand in hand with this is something that... I would call relaxed expectation, right? Which is a skill. Don't get me wrong. It's a, it's, it's like a muscle that we can build and stretch and get greater range of motion with when we use it and we practice with it. But slowly, but gently, I think, especially after this last year, getting ourselves back into a relaxed state of expectation for joyful happenings. And once again, we're going to want to start with small things, the joyful happening of the scent of the tea that we have, the joyful happening of seeing the sunrise and there be beautiful colors on the clouds, the joyful happening of listening to a bird sing on a tree. We got to start there, but we can start to also just hold ourselves in relaxed expectation for the things we don't even know we need in our lives. And this is where I have a story that came to me about my friends. And I think it's just so, it's really been sticking with me the last few days. It's really got me thinking about things for, since I heard it. And it's, it has to do with the right things coming into our lives. And so often we don't even know what they are before they come into our lives. So I have these friends who love to drive out into like the desert Southwest, like far from everybody and camp. You know, they love to just be out in nature, you know, covered in dust, sleeping in their little camper out in the middle of nowhere. That is what they love to do in their free time. And they were recently like 100 miles from like anything, Uh, maybe like 50 or 60 miles from the closest town, way out. And they woke up one morning, they were packing up, got in their car and started driving to the next thing they were going to go do. And my friend looks in his rearview mirror as he's driving and he sees this little black, what he realizes is a little dog running down the road, this tiny dirt road that literally nobody else is on. There's nobody around. 
running after the truck. And, you know, my friend, he is not like um, a woo-woo type of guy. Like he's a scientist and um, has much a really rational frame of mind. But even he was like, I could feel and sense that this little dog was saying, please stop, I need you. So he stops the car. It's this adorable, dehydrated, malnourished French bulldog puppy in the middle of, I mean, I'm telling you, nowhere who's probably been wandering out there for, I don't know, a couple of days, barely holding on. And, you know, they pick her up. She is just so full of love and warmth. And, you know, they rehydrate her, they take her home, they fall immediately in love with this little dog who just needs to be held. You know, she's just been in this crazy trauma. And the joy that this dog has brought to my friends, oh my God, like it's gonna make me cry. Like I can't stop thinking about it. It's so beautiful and like, she's bringing them joy and they're bringing her like comfort and safety and the and the funniest thing about it is that these are friends that have never wanted a dog it's not it's never been like on their vision board to like oh we want to have like three dogs and go camping with them no they liked the independence of a life without a dog not having to worry um he has allergies they're a couple you know and they've really loved their freedom and he has allergies to a lot of mammals <laughs> and they're driving along just enjoying their beautiful trip communing with nature and this dog comes into their lives that they didn't even know that they had been longing for they didn't even know was a miss like not missing but that they didn't even know was the next right step for them right and it came to find them and I was thinking about how so often we don't preconceive those elements and we don't even allow for their possibility of existence because we haven't imagined them yet. It's what I call the unimaginable horizon. The unimaginable horizon has all these things that we cannot possibly conceive of. In fact, I was just thinking too after that puppy story, which she is just the cutest dog. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Angels, angels on earth. Um, I was thinking about when I met my husband because the weekend before I met him, I was in this really great place where I was just relaxed. There was just this quiet. And I remember even writing in my journal, as I was journaling that, you know, there was a part of me that didn't want to trust the sense of relaxation I felt in myself. You know, I wasn't after a partner. I wasn't after a husband. I wasn't after a specific lifestyle. I was just really present with all the things I was enjoying in my life, my, my sister, my friends, um, getting to travel a little bit, getting to do the work that I loved, taking a nap in the afternoon. I just remember feeling really, really full of that. And I had no idea what was coming for me the next day. I had no idea. Like, this journey that I'm on, moving to Sweden and loving, like loving this journey so much. Like I can't even imagine my life without the things I'm experiencing and, and exploring right now. I, it just, it's such a part of me and my journey now, but at the time, like I had no idea. And I think that to me is like one of the high points of my practice of relaxed expectation because I knew that good things were gonna come meet me, but I had no way of like, delineating them in a concrete way. I would not have been able to tell you these were the things that were right for me. And I think sometimes because we can't fully delineate all those steps, we despair. We think that we're not being creative. We think that there aren't next steps, but there in fact really, really are. And of course, it's great to have a big vision. Of course, it's great to sometimes zoom out and really look and think about the things you want to accomplish. That's an awesome thing. But if you are feeling in trauma, exhausted, burnt out, in the fog, out of touch with your soul. And a lot of us are right now, right? Maybe not everybody, but I think there's a lot of people who have some dynamic with that, where they've lost some self-trust, they've lost some sense of clarity. We got to start with listening to our soul nudges. We got to start with listening to those little, little incremental steps. We have to start practicing and flexing that, I guess flexing isn't the right word, opening 
that part of ourselves that can get into relaxed expectation about the beautiful things that can come to find us and meet us and to get into a relaxed conversational stance with the world, with the universe, with our interaction with it. And it really is accessible through things like savoring a snack, savoring the smell of the, the fresh air, um, coming in contact with little moments that are supportive of you and listening to those, giving yourself that soul reinforcement, that nourishment reinforcement of actually listening when there is a call, when there is a request, or when there is a nudge coming from your soul that can help you feel more integrated. Also, what I'd like to say is, you know, if you are at the very beginning of a big creative journey, the a very beginning of a new chapter in life, the very beginning of a new project, and you don't even know where to start, don't underestimate just showing up for 10 minutes a day. Once again, that, that cultural voice is going to tell you that is worthless. There's no way you can get something done if you spend, I don't know, you can set your own reasonable, not too heavy, not too demanding amount of time to let you get started, to open your heart to it. I'd say 15 to 30 minutes is a great place to start. Maybe you can only start with five minutes, you know, depending on how enervated and overwhelmed you are, you're going to want to start where you feel maybe a little bit challenged, but not overwhelmed, right? That voice is, there's a voice in culture that tells us that that's not worth anything. But I tell you what, 30 minutes every day over the course of 30 days, that is significant. And a lot can happen in those moments of play and communion. So I want to give some encouragement to those of you who are feeling a little bit stuck or like, there's no way to make plans. There's no way to engage with life again. There's, it's, there's too much uncertainty. There's too much doubt. There's, there's no way to see the future. Once again, so many of the best things in our life come that we have not been able to put a pen to paper and plan out six months in advance. And that is great. That's always how it's going to be too. So once we drop the expectation that we need to preemptively know the blessings, the sense of calm that comes with us, and the more that when we are living in what Julian of Norwich, a like a monastic recluse who lived in England in during the bubonic plague in the 14th century talked about via positiva, which is about this relaxed expectation, this sense of being devoted to a practice of looking for the good in things. And we don't have to do that in a fake way. We're each going to be able to perceive those in different things, right? In different aspects of our lives. Um, but I just want to, I just wanted to, to really take a minute for all those. Thank you so much for sending your questions and sharing with me how you're feeling. Those senses of lack of self trust, lack of creativity, feeling stuck, feeling on a roller coaster, feeling like you can't get out, feeling like there is no way to move forward in this life because I was realizing how many of us are grappling with this and how much, so much of it is tied to the fact that it's like culturally, it's either like, oh, you're doing nothing and you're a slacker and you're sitting on the couch or you're getting these huge like life altering, like pan champagne popping angels coming down and like revealing your entire life purpose to you in showers of ecstasy and joy. And suddenly you know how to do everything. It's like those are the two extremes. And I found that I found that for me in understanding my purpose, understanding my calling, one that has continued to change year after year. I understand the subtler layers of what it is that I'm doing in this life and what brings me joy. And it's transforming and morphing. I'm doing more painting. Um, I'm doing more drawing. I'm doing more expressing via things that aren't just about like talking like this, I'm doing more writing. Those are things, those are things that are calling to me. So one, there's never just like a calling and you're done. Two, the calling is the tiny nudges. So we don't need to be looking for the, uh, the 
descending of the angels to shatter our world and and awaken us and make us you know somehow some different version of ourselves in order to find our purpose in order to find our creativity in order to find forward motion or in order to even make simple plans we just need to start listening and letting ourselves hear ourselves right so that's what i really wanted to cover today because it came up so often in the questions but I would love to hear more of your questions below because I really do have the vision <laughs> and we'll see, right? Um, but I really do have the vision of doing more of these coffee and chats more consistently covering these topics that I feel like I don't get a chance to like fully dive into when I'm doing my regular readings. Um, just a place for me to be casual and just like show more of my humanity and share more of my personal stories and reflections. And um, I'd love to hear your questions. What's coming up for you? How are you connecting with all of these questions in life? And of course you can find me on Patreon. We dive into these topics a lot and I talk, we have a chat every week um, and I'm having so much fun over there. So if you're looking for more community and more guidance, I would love to see you on Patreon. We have such an amazing time over there. Really, really fun. And of course, I will be seeing you for our monthly readings and all the goodness ahead. I love you guys so much. Thank you for sending me your questions. I hope to see you on Instagram, on Patreon, right here in the comments, in the subscribers list. Uh, that all would make me so happy. I'm sending you all so much love and listen to that soul nudge. It'll take, it'll, it'll lead you right every single time. Sending you so much love. <laughs>